Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. Today we will be looking at Wireshark's T Shark versus Dump Cap. All right. So, what's the difference? Well, here's where the confusion starts. They both run from the command line, they both write to a file, and they both support basic capture filters. And that's really important to understand. So, there's a lot of overlap in what they can do functionality wise. The Wireshark GUI or T Shark will use dump cap and that's a, a good way of remembering what does what. The theory is because the GUI and T Shark relies on dump cap, dump cap should outperform T Shark and the GUI. In this write up I'm going to skip the GUI and go straight to T Shark just to make things as compatible and comparable as possible. All right. So let's compare T Shark and dump cap to see what the difference is. And what I mean by that is performance wise, not functionality, options and syntax. That's not what I'm doing. I will cover the performance difference using typical packet sizes and network load. What I mean by that is I see no value in generating one gigabit of traffic at any packet size. Because at that rate, you're probably going to use a hardware based protocol analyzer, not your laptop running Windows and Wireshark. You'll probably use a hardware based analyzer at those rates. On to the lab, back to back test. You can see there's my traffic generator, there's a cable, and there's my laptop. It's an Alienware. Uh, with an i7 processor, gigabit ethernet, whole nine yards. It's a gaming laptop, so it has a bit of guts under the hood. And of course, I'm running Wireshark as well. And this is the best way to test. I don't want to switch. I don't want a hub. I don't want anything between them. I just want a piece of wire because I don't want any of those variables that a switch or any other device may introduce. That's not what I'm testing. The traffic generator screen looks like this. And this is kind of important, this part right here. If you go look into traffic generation you'll see there's a bit of a debate going on constantly about broadcast versus multicast versus unicast and I'm not going to get into that but uh, unicast is going to give my laptop the best possible um, opportunity to capture the packets I want it to I want it to succeed I don't want it to fail so I'm using a unicast over here on this side you can see I'm sending a million packets in this case it says 1.8 seconds based on the rate utilization and the frame size. So these are the three dials that I play with and that is what's going to control my stream. Dump cap. How am I sending my dump cap? We have a dash I for the interface. In my case my interface happens to be number eight. Uh, yours will be whatever it is. Dash W is going to write to a file. And this is more of a, a point to make with T-Shark than it is with dump cap just so you know. You can see it says capturing killer, the file name, how many packets I captured, and how many it thinks it dropped and you'll see why that comes into play later on. T-Shark, same deal, dash I8, just, just like dump cap, and dash W, same thing. Now the reason why I'm doing this with T-Shark is if you don't do a dash W, it writes to your screen. And I noticed a few things. So if I generate a bunch of packets and I'm running T-Shark and it's to my screen, a few things happen. Number one, I generally drop more packets. And number two, it takes a while for the screen to catch up with the packets that were fired into the, the laptop, which may be related, may not, doesn't matter. So I found the best performance I can get is if I write to my disk. So they're both writing to the same file name on the same disk in the same folder, all that kind of stuff, trying to keep everything consistent. T Shark tells you how many it captured and how many it dropped, right? Note to the application programmers it'd be really wonderful if you can put a comma in these numbers. <laughs> I know it sounds trivial, but later on when you use this a lot, it really does wear on you a bit. Just a suggestion. So here's my test results. 825 bytes. I tried to choose something between the smallest and largest frame size. 18,580 frames per second or 12.6% utilization on a 1 gig connection. And I sent a million packets. So here we go. T-Shark reported and actual. So you can see reported 863 actually lost 1366. And that's a common theme. So if your device says I dropped something, it says I lost something, well it probably lost a lot more than that. And and I think it's important to note that even if you um, have a relatively close number between reported and actual, your timings are probably going to be all messed up. So this leads into a bunch of different issues when you're analyzing your traffic. And there you go. So 0.03% in this example of lost and you might say well that's not much yeah but you know what that's 250 packets which means if I was analyzing a session it may incorrectly state that there was a lost packet that sort of thing right so you want to make sure that you keep that as low as possible dump cap surprisingly enough didn't drop didn't miss a beat didn't drop a packet awesome 
So this is a 12.6%. So now we're going to amp it up a bit. 25%, you know, a little over, yeah, just call it double. And you can see now we have 37,000 frames per second, which again makes sense, right? You can see it says received, lost, and this number went up, right? Probably proportionately went up. And you can see dump cap. You see a little crack in its armor. It lost a couple, two out of five times. Again, not as much, but it still lost a few. And now if we go up just a little bit more, 50%, because I think this is the point at which people would probably stop using their laptops and move to a hardware-based tool. Uh, same deal, 825 bytes, 74,000 frames per second. And you can see this goes up. And now again, we have two out of five times. So generally speaking, just generally speaking, dumb cap outperformed T-Shark, right? So I would suggest that you print off the T-Shark and dump cap help screens and that way you can have all the options available if you decide to do that right if you are going to use the GUI just remember that uses dump cap as well so if you are having issues dropping packets so you want to make sure things are as accurate as possible you might want to go straight to dump cap print off the help screen and that way you can do your ring buffers and or filters and all that kind of jazz if you have access to a traffic or packet generator you should probably play with that with your laptop or desktop of choice find out how well your computer performs based on load based on frame sizes just a note usually you increase the frame rate and that increases the chance of dropping a packet and to take that a step further the smaller the packet also increases the chance of dropping a packet but please don't generate a stream at 64 bytes at 1 gig don't do that you'll never see that uh, so try to keep things as realistic as possible so I hope that helped have a good day bye for now